So May 5th, we learned that we're only going to be getting an initial deposit of 36% of our funds from this Voyager digital toggle switch on the Voyager platform. We also learned that not every cryptocurrency is gonna be transferred. We're gonna be getting some USDC for some and or cash money for others. Cash money, I'm gonna make it rain. And since I posted that video, I've been getting a lot of questions about specific type of cryptocurrencies or what wallets is gonna go to, like what is the process behind this? And one of the more interesting questions is, what about the 76%? In this core document, it said 36% up to 63%. So where is the difference going between that, right? This other loss, this, this loss that we're technically taking as of right now. And well, luckily it's like, Voyager knows that we don't all read court documents all the time. So we don't really know that legal jargon. Can't you read? And you know what they did? They put out a statement kind of breaking it down into layman's terms. And we're going to look at that today. And hopefully it eases some of our minds and kind of shows us exactly what's going to happen. It also answers some very important questions that I had as well as some of you guys had and some that I didn't even think about. So hopefully this answers questions for everyone. And, and it kind of shows us what we need to know as far as the next steps and eases our minds. And so hopefully we're going to be getting our money back pretty soon, but you know how this goes. It wouldn't shock me if something else happened. What a shocker that this went bad. Thank you. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out this information that I have for you guys. Voyager officially put out a statement on their official Twitter page, which they haven't done in quite a while. Well, over the past few days they have because of what's going on, but check this out. On Friday, Voyager filed with the court to proceed detailing how it intends to execute the company's chapter 11 plan and provide initial recoveries. Thread number two is exactly what, what we're going to dive into. It's an important update on initial recoveries to customers on their official blog. If you want to see this yourself, go to investvoyager.com, go to the node and it'll be there presented waiting for you. Or just go to the official Twitter page and click this. And while you're on Twitter, go ahead and follow me at Crunchy Capital. And now my cat's in the video. And then of course, they got to let us know that once the plan is effective, we will provide more information on the next steps and hopefully it does go effective, right? But onto the main issue or the main uh, sum of information is gonna be this on the Voyager note. So, so Voyager filed the procedures with the bankruptcy court detailing on how it intends to execute the chapter 11 plan and, and get us our crypto through the Voyager app. Alternatively, customers may choose to receive their initial recoveries in cash after the 30 day crypto withdrawal period has ended. So if you don't want the crypto, you don't want the USDC, you can get the cash after 30 days and we'll see exactly how we're gonna get it. Either check cash or money order, not really money order, but you know, bank transfer. So this is very important. This is gonna hopefully break it down a lot simpler than I did last time and then the court filings did. So return of value, the estate of 1.34 billion in assets, which equates to about 75.68% of the value of customer claims against Voyager's estate. Customers will receive an initial recovery estimated to be 35.72 or 36% of their claim amount due to certain holdbacks. So we're only getting an initial 35.72% because of these holdbacks. This money is being held back and the chart below will outline the percentage in which it is calculated. Now, depending on resolutions of the FTX and Alameda claims the success of any additional claims brought by the uh, Voyager plan administrator against third parties, as well as recovery by the Voyager estate as a creditor in the three arrows capital liquidation, customers may receive additional recoveries in the future. Subsequent recoveries can be made in cash or crypto at the plan's administrative dis discretion. So, Officially, we're getting 35.72% initially, okay? We all know what's going on. Um, people's gonna keep trying to take money out of this pot. I do believe that we're gonna see some more issues going through with this. I don't think they're just gonna let it slide like this. Worst case scenario, it drags out for years to come and we only do get this 35%. Best case scenario, we <laughs> get the 35% a lot quicker like this year, you know what I mean? Um, Cause I'm sure again, they're gonna try to scoop up and keep all these holdbacks. Speaking of the holdbacks, let's see this chart as it breaks it down below. So 
A, total assets for recovery in Voyager's possession. Again, that is all cash, cash equivalents, and crypto assets held by the debtors. And that's 1.3 million. And the percent of customer claims in Voyager's possession is 75% of this total. FTX Alameda preference claim. So Voyager is required to hold back the amount of FTX and Alameda's alleged preference claim against Voyager. These funds will be held until the FTX Alameda preference dispute is resolved. A successful outcome in the FTX and Alameda preference dispute would result in some of or all of these funds being paid to customers in subsequent recoveries. So that's future recoveries. And that is going to be for $145 million held back. Now C is wind down costs and litigation reserves. Now this is 135 million. So a wind down budget for administrative functions, remaining employees ad advisors and other operational expenses, as well as a litigation reserve available to the plan administrator to bring additional claims that may result in further recoveries to the state. Meaning, this is basically to keep the operations going and for also litigation fees just in case other things happen, which is kind of crazy that we still got to pay them to keep this going. D, administrative and priority tax claims, accured professional fees, trade expenses and priority tax claims, which is this is pretty self-explanatory. All other holdbacks, additional holdbacks related to potential tax claims and intercompany settlements. F, total account holder claims, which is 1.7 billion. Total dollar value of customer claims based on coin holdings priced as July 5th, 2022. And then initial recovery, the percentage of an account holder claims that will be included in the initial recovery after accounting. So hopefully that breaks that down a little bit better for you. These are all the things, all the money that's being held back as of now out of this amount right out of the total amount as of right now now the total amount as of july 5th 2022 is or 1.7 billion okay now scrolling down if you either want crypto or cash listen to this you may choose either to take your initial recovery in crypto through the voyager platform or wait until the crypto withdrawal period is over to receive your initial recovery in us dollars to receive your initial recovery in crypto, once access to the Voyager app is made available, you will have 30 days to log in and transfer supported crypto from your Voyager account to a designated wallet address. Whether another US based platform or a wallet, it's up to you unless they come out with a list saying of specific ones we have to use any US based platform or crypto wallet. And holders of unsupported coins, like we talked about, and the VGX token will receive a pro rata amount of USDC in lieu of those specific coins. And that USDC can then be transferred off the platform. So they will be transferred on the platform itself to USDC. And then that USDC can be moved to another platform or wait past the 30 days and get your cash or your bank transfer. To receive your money solely in US dollars, you do not need to take any actions. You just wait for the 30 days crypto withdrawal window to close and your account will be liquidated and you will receive US dollars either by check or possibly an ACH withdrawal, which basically means transfer to your account that's linked to the Voyager digital platform. So again, how much value will be returned? Initially, an estimated recovery will be 35.72 percent and then it really depends on what happens with ftx and the three arrows capital and how long this all takes to play out uh how much more we're going to get back from that again the supported coins are here that means that's what, what we can get back in crypto and then unsupported is here which will be automatically transferred to usdc on the voyager platform and then you can take it out or transfer it, right? Or just let it run over the 30 day period and get your cash. And once again, the VGX token will receive USDC in lieu of that coin or cash if it is preferred. And you might ask, well, why can't I just get all my value back at the same time, right? Why do I have to wait for all of this? Why am I only getting 36%? Well, that's because Voyager can't return all value at the same time because it is required to hold back certain things, including the amount for the FTX Alameda alleged preference claim against Voyager. These funds will be held until the FTX preference dispute is resolved. A successful outcome in the FTX preference dispute will result in some 
or all of these funds being paid back to customers in subsequent recoveries. And in this last part, how will I receive my US dollar recoveries? Initial US dollar recoveries will be made either by check sent to the address listed on your Voyager account or possibly by ACH. So look out for that. So we know we'll have 30 days once the process has begun to liquidate our funds. And if you want straight cash, you just don't do anything, wait for the 30 days to go through and you will get either a check or an ACH transfer. If you do want the crypto as of now, what you would do is within that 30 day period, transfer your crypto to any wallet or any US based platform and unsupported tokens will be transferred automatically on the Voyager platform to USDC and those could be transferred out to uh, the aforementioned wallets or US based platform. So that's what we have for you today. This is looks like it's getting more official. Hopefully this does go through and, and hopefully there's no objections within this 10 day court period. We'll have to keep an eye on it and see if anyone actually disputes this, which I'm sure there'll be some objections from somewhere and hopefully the court, you know, is on our side at this point. I'm ready to get my funds back, at least start getting my funds back. I know about you guys. I know you're ready to get your funds back too. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Do you think we're gonna get just the 36% or 35.72% back? Do you think we're gonna get any of that other 70% back? Um, Cause I, I have a feeling we're not gonna get it back. So I'm willing to take this 36% and run with it and just put this in the past. So if you enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button. And again, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this situation. And if you're still watching and haven't done so, please hit that little red subscribe button to join this little family we have, guys. If you want to continue your journey with me, go ahead and click one of the screens on this video. I'm going to get out of here. Peace, love, and prosperity.